I was in a drama school here in New York, finishing my second year, and a young lady in the class said, I have found the most wonderful teacher, Herbert Berghoff and his wife, Uta Hagen. And I went to visit his class and was hoodwinked totally, 100%. It made my two years seem stupid. And I mean that most sincerely. He was a great director of actors. He was fierce, very exacting, and then he would get very happy. Or he would not. But either way, it was you couldn't wait to go to rehearsal. It was 1951 through, through three, somewhere in there. I was in Bermuda. I was a member of the repertory company down there. And down came Uta Hagen to try out her new play. And uh, we were warned that this coming lady was going to burn up the stage. And I said, nonsense, no one burns up the stage. A week later, I looked around at the charred timbers of the, of the proscenium arch, and I knew that I had been with a real actress, and I wanted to study with her. Where's that lining they cheer about? It was a golden age, as they call it now, on Broadway. The work was taken very seriously, and that starts at the top, of course. The, the noble effort that Uta and Herbert made in starting the school while they were directing and acting was fantastic and making it affordable. We've always provided opportunity to people who might not otherwise have had an opportunity. And so we've always had a very eclectic community, I would say a real community. The dedication and enthusiasm of their students convinced Herbert to buy this building and when they acquired it, they had a huge party. Students just going wild with joy that they had a building. They just almost made him do it and he never forgot it always talked about his responsibility to the students. And the teachers that taught here, starting with Herbert and Uda, were performing. And that was an incredible thing. That first term I studied with her in the, in the summer, and I went and saw a preview of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Jesus H. Christ! Oh, for God's sake, it's two o'clock in the morning! Oh, what George! Oh, I'm sorry! What a cluck, what a cluck you are! So to see her work, I mean, everything she taught, she did, but it didn't look like a theory of acting, it just was happening. Seeing that your acting teacher could really act, really, really do it. I think it's the single most exciting night I ever had in the theater. I got so much courage from being with her and being in her class and always asking myself, why am I doing what I'm doing? And I, that comes from her. They were very different as teachers, but also very much after the center of the truth. Well, Uda was right by the books. Everybody got equal time, but you never knew when you were going to do a scene in Herbert's class. He was always telling you a story because they meant something about the art of acting. He would take you places. He would just kick open doors of ways of looking at things. And Uda was very specific and technical almost, an inner technique as well as an outer technique. The 4th Armored Division of General Patton's 3rd Army liberated this camp early in April. Herbert was coming to the U.S. as a refugee from a cataclysmic failure of human decency. He had lost the family that he had, so the importance of this artistic home was enormous. He started to convince me that theater was probably the most important thing in the world as far as letting people understand the human condition and be more tolerant. And I began to see that this was kind of a remarkable way to live your life. They were wonderful to be with because of what you learned from them in how they saw. The two of them together summarized the best thoughts I'd have about acting. I've built up a picture of, of what theater is to me. Let's get started with a warm up. <sighs> when people call me and say, I want to become an actor, well, how do I start? I say, you got to go to HP. It's got a great history, great actors studied here. Whimsical, light, carefree. There's an energy to a place. Just everything from its location to the way it looks. It doesn't feel fake and false. It feels authentic. I guess her father was a well-fed man. Yes, your aunt was. God knows it's not pretentious. 
but I think it is high standards always. Outlandish is literally any sound that you could make. One of the things that's most appealing is the variety of offerings and the diversity of approaches that you are exposed to here. We have an extraordinary faculty that are unbelievably generous. The first time that you did it, you were more connected with your personalization. We have people aging from 20 to 90, people who really lived the different eras of theater. Everybody here is seriously wanting to train actors to be artists. You learn through osmosis. Not just knowing what to do in terms of reading the script, analyzing the script and so forth, but really, really finding out about oneself. Find your own time, find your own breath. Pursuit of one's craft is a cheerfully endless, excitingly endless, sometimes frustratingly endless trip. HB is a place that can meet you at all phases of the trip. And once you make those decisions, you're ready to start to roll. Uh, a place to begin, a place to advance, a place to refine, refocus. The atmosphere at HB is very nurturing. That whole exchange was wonderful. It's not easy to be in this business, and you have to feel that someone's supporting you and welcomes you. And that's what I feel here. It's so inclusive and uh, accepting and uh, celebratory, but they also want you to get out and go do it. I thought we didn't need marriage. We all are born with gifts, and unless we tap into those gifts, it's wasted talent. Oh, good morning, Cinderella. Good morning. HB Studio takes you to a place where you can take your talent and go out there and show it to the world. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. Coming here was a huge part of my growing up. It's where it all began for me, really. And then just let that go. Where it became very, very real for me. Yeah. More open heartedness believing in myself and finding my craft. You have to have consequences. But I have a lot of students who have gone out and made a name for themselves, and I could not be prouder of their work. I'm feeling like three classes. So what does this mean? When you are teaching acting, you are opening the world to anybody who enters your doors. Because there is so much playfulness in this scene. And it was very rich. We can go through different trials in our lives and you get back to the craft, you use it. This is what I learned from the school. The influences that I got here from Uda, from Herbert, their belief system was so powerful in the work. That's very potent. I think anybody that's been here as long as I have, you love it and want to give it back. The security of the character, but also the decisiveness. It is a legacy that they have left. Especially the legacy. I just feel really lucky because it has been my life. But the irony isn't really for the actor. I've stayed teaching here all these years because sometimes I think it holds me together. It's a stage direction meant to ironize. But I can go into a class feeling totally paranoid about life, about my work, about my career. Within 20 minutes after the class begins, I just feel so connected and released. If the thoughts we connect with don't send us into action, drop it, quick. Right. I'm 90 years old and I feel pretty good because I'm doing something. Look at all the people who have to work so hard and really hate their jobs. I don't. We make up a story and look what happened. It's always appetite. And I know that's what Uta and Herbert gave us. It helped our appetites. That's that note that I gave you. Did you just feel it? You know, it gets corny sometimes when we hear there's no business like show business and all that. But the people you meet, they keep you young.